I'd like to see is we've got 12 spiders turning and they uh, they count the quest. Mm -hmm. Okay, speeches. You're on the floor. You're on the floor. Okay. Dorothy from Oz? Dorothy from Oz? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions about Lyme disease? Any thoughts? Anybody have experiences? Anything anybody want to share? Lyme disease? Uh, it's been the worst nightmare ever, but. And as Arnold would say, it's been the gift, best gift ever yes. because it made me change my life. I had no choice, as you probably and the other Lyme recipients here, you know, it makes, it makes you look at life a completely different way. So you changed your whole diet, everything I changed new. a lot. I changed the way I thought. I'm still working on that. <laughs> you know, your thought processes and things like that, your mental, uh, your mental, the way you perceive things has to change or you're not going to get better a lot of times so that's I'm still working on that but as far as the food made a huge difference in my way I feel now no medications you're not doing anything I'm not on any meds no and how long have you been off the meds for a while um well I had Lyme for probably close to 14 years now that I'm looking back at it I thought it was 12 but it's actually more like 14 and um I never really stayed on the meds I did two and a half months of a pick line with the um, antibiotics and oral antibiotics. So it was pretty rough, but that was pretty much the only meds that I ever took. And that didn't work for you? Oh, it helped. It helped. I can't say it didn't help. It absolutely did. But the chronic fatigue stayed, the fibromyalgia stayed, the restless body stayed, and that is on its own way out at this point. So the Lyme started all these other things? The them. Lyme pretty much contributed to everything. Also some heart issues I got from the Lyme. Wow. Aneurysm that might have been caused by the might have been caused by the treatment because the treatment's pretty harsh. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know what caused it. But I'm I'm doing a lot better than I was. Thank God. And you look terrific. Yeah. Food yeah. Food yeah. Food terrific. Food. Yeah. 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 Uh, like I said, my name's Dave. Um, my whole story was uh, probably when I was about like seven or eight years old. I uh, had the bullseye rash on my knee. I uh, went to the doctor, was given a week's worth of antibiotics and said you'll be all right. And ever since then, I'm 29 now, uh, probably about till I was 22 or 23, my health went downhill. Uh, I made it into college. <coughs> I was an athlete. I played soccer year round. All of a sudden, I started passing out and I started having all these weird symptoms that I thought I was dying. You know, I didn't know what was going on. I, nobody could give me an answer. I've been doctor after doctor. Uh, medical treatment after medical treatment. I had um, a friend of mine who just happened to say, why don't you get tested for Lyme again when I was 22? Went the standard way, had to go, uh, you know, thank God I had, my family had, had insurance at the time. Uh, and the doctor got, you know, did the testing, found that I had it again, but then there is the whole insurance, there's a whole thing with the insurance side of how they treat you uh, mainstream wise. Uh, I finally got the approval, um, I had the oral antibiotics first, uh, which did a number on my stomach. I didn't feel any better. I felt worse. Um, I got a pick line in my arm. I had that for six months. I was giving myself really high doses of antibiotics five days a week for, like I said, six months until the insurance wouldn't cover it anymore. I did, didn't feel no better. Um, and basically, I was I had no hope, you know, pretty much for anything because I. I Nobody could tell me what was going on. Nobody could help me. Uh, but that spurred me to look into a different avenue, alternative health, alternative things. And uh, I found naturopaths who started supplementation and colloidal silver and, and alternative things. Didn't really get anything from it. So I was kind of, you know, in a catch-22 situation here trying to figure out what's, what's going on. The, the mainstream can't help me and the alternative can't help me. So I was kind of like depressed and having all these r really bad symptoms. So uh, the one thing I haven't done 100%, um, I've done some juicing and things like that, but I found Arnold's YouTube videos and happened to see the whole you know, thing with being raw and that's the one thing I haven't done yet. And I'm sticking to 100% and I've seen a lot of people like you and your videos and other people that with Lyme have had good results and that's, that's the one thing I haven't done yet and that's what I'm gonna do. So that's pretty much my story up to this point. Yeah. This is your initiation into rocks? Uh, yeah, 14, 15 days in. So. That's great. 100%. How do you feel? A little difference? 
I went, I'm going through some detox stuff right now. Uh, some skin stuff, some um, energy, like day three or four went down. Um, felt like I just wanted to sleep. Uh, but slowly my energy's coming back up. I'm starting to feel like myself. Sleep is healing. Yeah. Uh, exactly, that's what Donald says. When, you, when your body's telling you something, you gotta acknowledge it and give it that. So. And you can soak your feet and have some salts. Yep. That'll draw things down and your feet yeah. are the largest pores in your body. Yep. So. Do that every day, but don't soak your, don't start out soaking your whole body. Yeah, that'll yeah. make you feel, feel real sick. Yeah. They'll come out and go right back in, and you'll really get overwhelmed. Oh, it's funny you said that because I've done that before in the past, and I've always felt like crap. Yeah, you have to do your feet every day for at least a week before okay. you would consider soaking in the tub. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's my story. Because you're out. drawing it down and out, yeah. and basically pulling it away from your organs so they don't get overwhelmed like you would in the tub. Gotcha. And then after a week of it, then you can try it. It <coughs> might not be long enough, depending on how sick you are. The sicker mm-hmm. you are, the longer you want to just keep pulling it out, down and out. Even a hangnail or a headache will benefit yeah. by soaking your feet. Cool. Just pulls it down mm-hmm. and out. Yeah, it feels really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It puts you to sleep. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely try Magnesium is great. Great. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you get it blind? Well, <laughs> unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, ticks, I mean, but... You get bit by a tick. Yeah, that's how I did, but there's other ways. They say it's transferable, at least I've heard from mosquitoes and other things as well. But well, you get bit by a bug, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. I can give you my journey and what helped me and what get me to where I am, which is, as of this week, I went from 80% raw to about 70% raw. I noticed that the change of seasons altered my diet, so I needed to alter with it. And I'm steaming vegetables. I'm steaming them for a couple of moments, a couple of minutes, maybe two minutes, two to three minutes at, at most. Very low heat. Um, that's making a difference. I need certain things like, and, and again, this is about the body's needs: artichoke hearts, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, things, things that you just can't eat raw. Because of the Lyme's disease, I. <coughs> Waited too long. The first time I had Lyme's disease, it didn't affect me the same way. I got it. I got my tick line in. 17 hours of antibiotics. I was good. It was two days after I got bit. I didn't have any signs other than old injuries acting up. The second time I got it, I got the bullseye, but I had no other symptoms. I said, nah, this can't be Lyme. Lyme, it's got to be something else. So eight months later, I can't even walk. I can't walk my dogs. I can't walk up a hill. Went to the doctor, did all kinds of testing. They said, you got Lyme's disease. I said, I got rid of that. They said, well, you got to get it. All of a sudden, I'm standing there in the doctor's office, and I get this vision in my head of the, of the bullseye. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Well, I had some, because of this, because I let it eat me away for eight months, there were some pancreatic mm-hmm. issues. There were <coughs> gallbladder issues, everything, lung stuff, heart stuff, one thing after the other. Wow. I was getting it. shredded. Did you have pancreatitis ended up that way too, huh? On all levels. That's uh, so organs were shutting down, and it was a really serious situation. My uh, my priest wanted to drag me to the emergency room. I was like, Father, I've been there three times this week. They can't help me. One of the great saving graces I had was a lady named Grace. She was an acupuncturist, and she put so many pins in my head, I looked like Pinhead from Hellraiser. And I, I just couldn't imagine how this would work. And I had a background in alternative medicine, but the whole body was shutting down. And um, the doctors, the medical doctors, wanted to give me a protocol. Eight weeks of this, eight weeks of this, eight weeks of that. I was so far gone, this was never going to help me. Uh, so I decided to sprout. Being a man of the spirit, I listened to my body. And my body told me, mung beans. I never even heard of mung beans. Never even seen a mung bean. And you thought of it yourself? No, it wasn't my thought. It came from right. divinity. But you, it came right in here. Nobody yeah. said it in your ear. Uh, I didn't tell you. Arnold no. didn't tell well, you. Well, we'll get to that later. Uh, that's the second uh-huh. part of the lecture. Um, so what was happening was I was being guided to get things that I didn't know I needed. And I had to rely on a, on something that was not me. Because I had I was a former bodybuilder and a musician, but I had no real knowledge about how food could heal the body. So I'd walk into, into uh, the produce section and I'd notice that my body would draw itself to some things and not to others. And I didn't understand why. It didn't make any sense to me. So I went to sprouts. And I never eat sprouts in my life, but I'm eating sprouts. Alfalfa sprouts, radish sprouts, mung bean sprouts. And then the spirit 
the Holy Spirit is telling me to uh, put water in with the mung beans, let them sprout, and then juice them. Well, my digestive sh system shut down, and I had celiacs, and there was nothing I could eat. So I had to juice, and for nine months, I juiced mung beans, and that's what I had to eat for nine months, twice a day. You grew them yourself? No, I actually got them at Wegmans, but I did sprout them. And I didn't know why, mung beans, I had no idea. Did I decide to go to nutrition to look and see what was up? No, I was just happy to be alive and to be able to consume some food. Very grateful. Um, got to the point where I lost my job. I lost everything I had, my family, my dog, everything, my apartment, and I had no place to be. I was taken in by some people who said, look, I don't know what to do for you, but who gave you a safe place to be. So I worked with the Holy Spirit, and I was able to um, be guided to what was needed for my body. Now I look up B17. I look up uh, mung beans, and I see B17 is a huge vitamin that is in mung beans. And B17 has been outlawed by our government since the 70s. Okay, so this is something that you can have, and it's in very few things. It's in crab apples, it's in the seeds. Um, but B17 is something you guys need to look up. It's a cancer killer. Why do they outlaw it? Yeah. It's in apricots. Right? Yes. I was going to say apricots, yeah. yeah. Because it's a cancer killer. So it was outlawed because of the fact the government knows that it can cure cancer and because of the medical system. Pretty much. 100% bingo. Yeah. 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 Because it has cyanide. Right, but cyanide goes into the unhealthy right. cells and kills them. Mm -hmm. so, right. You know. It penetrates the healthy cells. So basically what, uh, what I did also was work out really intensely. I needed to up the amps of my immune system, my lymphatic system. I really, really needed to pump up. And I was working out three or four times a day with no nutrition in my body um, or the limited amounts that I could put in. I couldn't do fruit. I couldn't do anything sweet because as soon as I ate like half a banana, I'd get neuropathy in my feet. My feet would start to burn and throb with half a banana. So, okay, if you cut sweets, now you fruitarians know, if you cut any kind of fruit out of your diet, what is left to eat? There ain't much. No. So, what I had to survive on what was what was there, and it was vegetables. And I, I was kind of, you know, I'm, I'm still in this moment of being grateful and thankful that I have something to eat that I can put in my body. The Holy Spirit still guided me. I could have one cherry one day every three days. Once a day, three day, every three days, maybe every a couple of cherries day. a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this was getting my body gradually. And it's, uh, I would go to the cherries. I'd pick up a bag, and it wouldn't work. But I'd pick up four or five, and my body would be like, "Okay, you can yeah. take this." Yeah. And there's a whole system that I, that I was working with, to, and I call it now Doctor Body. It's just a way to to hold food in your hand and feel if it's right for you in the moment. Muscle there's, test. Yes, yeah. exactly. There is so much information in there and there's so much information out there and so much is conflicting, but you have to personalize. All of it is correct, but you have to personalize because everybody's body and their chemistry is different, so you have to work for you. Um, I was working out three, four times a day. I was jumping rope. I was jogging. Um, I was cardio training with uh, different machines, um, weight training, very lightly though, using rubber bands, three or four times a day, just creating a constant circulation, not allowing myself to slow down. I got to the point where I was afraid to sleep because my heartbeat would get so slow that I thought it would eventually stop. Um, fear was what motivated me to keep moving. I moved in with a friend of mine and got to know some other people and they introduced me to Arnold. Um, came here, saw the place, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Now, I wasn't trying to keep a raw diet. I was doing my best to do what the Spirit instructed me. I was literally living by the Spirit. And there was no other way. I know where I'm standing now, there would have been no other way because I didn't have the knowledge that I have now to give me the depth that I would have had to exercise this privilege to get the food that my body needed. So coming here, I got to see what was here, and I was like, wow, this, we need to have one of these everywhere. Um, wound up working with him to get my body more in shape, more attuned to what it needs. And now I'm able to eat a banana, I'm able to eat an apple, I'm able to eat dates a couple of days where I could not before. This wasn't even a possibility. Now there's no more neuropathy. I have no more issues with my feet. 
Arnold got his, his own regime of training, and uh, we ca I kind of used some of his and put it with some of mine, and it seems to be making the whole world a difference, that and raw food. <clears throat> now, all this came at a pretty difficult point in my life, losing everything. This is a symbol of the Christian faith. It's called the Trinity. And it represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father being the creator of all things that we have, the food, us, the world, the universes. His Son, of course, we all know Jesus Christ, who gave up everything. And did so many things in the process of giving up anything and everything that he gave up. And if anybody wants to talk about that after the class, I'd be more than happy to. And then there's the Holy Spirit, the messenger. Listening to the Holy Spirit is something we all do. You said something before, the Spirit told you. Okay. We all have these that come to us. Sometimes they come from inside. Sometimes they come from the outside. The question is discernment, how to discern who's what and where's why. So um, what I found, and before I go any further with my healing, I'm going to say I was 100% authentically living in the wrong light of Christ. I was a drinker. I was an alcoholic. I was a heavy metal musician for 20 years, professional musician, but still a heavy metal musician. Uh, not doing anything that was right in the light of Christ. As I got sicker, my, my body started to heal. Before I got to Arnold's, my body started to heal, but neurologically there was still something wrong, and I could not figure out what it was. Every time I asked the Spirit to show me, I wouldn't get anything. A friend of mine said, why don't you come back to the Catholic Church? I said, come back to the church and see if Jesus can help you. Neurologically, if I picked up a cell phone and talked on it for about 10, 12 seconds, I'd get a burning in this part of my head. And I didn't know why. If I raised my voice, I'd get a burning in this side of my head. Didn't know why. So, Knowing what I know, my body's starting to come back. It's starting to regenerate neurologically. My head isn't working. Now, the head of the church, Jesus Christ being the head, in a Christian faith, he is the head, we are the body. I took my neurological issues to him, and I sat in front of something the Catholics call the Eucharist. It's the body and blood of Christ. If you sit in a room with the Eucharist, you can feel its presence. It Not just can you feel it, but it knocks you out. Um, People that I've entered, walked with, and brought them to the Eucharist, who are non-Christians, not have no denomination whatsoever, walk in there and they walk out saying, what the hell was that? Brought Arnold there. Yeah. Arnold was in there, and he answered the young man's question, <coughs> who said, what the hell was that? Arnold turned around and said, that was God. <laughs> okay? So, you have the body that needs to be healed, you have the mind and you have your soul. And all of them have to be healed together. And this is what this experience showed me. So I sat in front of the Eucharist two hours a day, every day. I did the rosary. I did uh, all the devotional prayers. But what was happening is that if I'd be on the cell phone before I'd go into church and I'd have my headache, I'd close the phone, walk, sit down in front of the Eucharist, in two to three minutes, it was gone. Now, if I didn't go sit in front of the Eucharist, the headache would continue. The burning would continue all day, all night. It wouldn't stop. So I would just stay off the cell phone, right? But when I walked into the Eucharist, it would go away. So to me, that was the missing link. So I walked and sat in front of the Eucharist. Now it's been three years. And the miracles that have happened from it, I cannot tell you. I'm, well, I'm never truly all there. But neurologically, I am the best I've ever been in my life. And the spiritual gifts and blessings, the graces that come from being there, I can compare to nothing. Arnold sees me, I leave the house 11 o'clock at night to go there. He's like, where are you going? He's like, oh, I'm going to Eucharist, see you later. 11 o'clock at night, I'm there 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, because you can't experience the presence of God unless you're there. Now, God is everywhere. He's in the air, he's in the water, he's in the trees, he's in the ground, he's in everything. But the purest place, because we have polluted everything to the umpteenth degree, is where it is. And I petition you with my heart to be able to just go and try this. Just sit in front of an adoration chapel. Where can you go 24 hours a day? Lansdale. Oh yeah, Lansdale. You can Lansdale. come to Arnold's house. Yeah. You can come work out at Arnold's. This and then one right on Welsh Road? Right on. Stanislas, is right. it? 
Saint Stanislaus. Saint that's Stan, it. Saint Stanislaus. But that was the key for my healing, and it really helped me see things clearly um, that I've never seen before. And it is a whole body, mind, and spirit thing. You cannot leave this. And I look at it like this: This is the spirit of nature. Okay, the complete circle. Everything in life is circular. The planets, your cells, everything. The Trinity goes beyond the physical. And we are not just physical beings. We're evolving beyond that. So the call is to answer the Christ whenever you're ready. But have the experience in the Eucharist and know what it is. Acknowledge what is there before us. There are so many gifts that is there in the church that people have no idea. So many graces. It's easy to say, I don't want to go, I don't want to know. But to try it and experience and then say I don't want it is another story. So I ask you all, please give it the shot. Arnold's house and then the Eucharist in Lansdale. Okay? Sounds good to me. Is it right in the main church? What? Is it right in the main church? It's uh, between the main church and the main office. Can you go to your own church? Uh, if it has a Eucharistic adoration, yeah. What's the Eucharistic adoration? It's uh, a presence. The Eucharist is the communion which uh, we take when we take on the body of Christ. Well, do you have to believe being a Catholic? I'm a Baptist. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. You well, can just, sit. Just sit and sit. You can you, sit in front of it. You can it's like eating raw food, see what it does for you. Exactly. Sit with the presence of the body of Christ and see what, how, he, how you respond to him, how he responds to you. Exactly. You don't have to be a Catholic to do that. You don't have to have any denomination. Just go in there and have this experience because it's not like anything you can experience. Are we going to do a field trip after the air or what? Let's go. <laughs> I would like to see where it is. Hey, we're in Lansdale. We can do that. Might as well. Anybody wants to go, I'd be more than happy to take it. It's my, my personal <laughs> resting place. I got you tonight. <laughs> so, so what I wanted to say is... Um, is that a Eucharist? The Eucharistic adoration? No, no. What is that? The U this is just the symbol of the Trinity. And it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the, symbolos, the symbolism is this is the earth, this is nature, this is what we're doing by eating raw food. Okay, we're honoring the body. But then there's your mind and your spirit that need to be honored. And the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. right. takes care of your mind, and your soul is taken care of by Jesus. You, um, it's funny because, again, I'm transitioning to raw foods, and I'm, I'm a Christian as well. I'm, I'm not Catholic, but still, we all believe in you know, the same Jesus. thing. But I compare raw food to Dan Daniel's diet. If you know the Bible, um, when um, Daniel and his two other um, friends were um, favorites of the king, when you know when they were when they conquered Israel and they had to move to I think of Babylon or whatever, but the king wanted Daniel and his friends to eat of his food, and Daniel said, "No, just feed us water and vegetables." Mm -hmm. Gain a lot. They and when the king compared Daniel and his friends compared to the other men who in his court who ate the rich foods, Daniel and his friends were smarter, healthier, stronger, and brighter. Mm -hmm. And they had much more wisdom. Yeah.